So you guys have probably heard the question, if you could go back in time and kill baby Hitler, would you do it? And the obvious answer is usually yes, of course. Why wouldn't you try and save all those people? But have you ever thought about the moral implications of that? You know, killing a baby? Baby hasn't done anything, it might not actually end up happening, but it does. And you would, right? I don't know. Maybe. Well, in today's political upheaval, that question kind of takes on a new meaning. With talks of nuclear war and heated debate between countries, if you knew that the President of the United States would nuke a country and begin nuclear war, would you kill them? That's the question that's tackled in David Cronenberg's 1980s hit The Dead Zone, starring Christopher Walken. It's based off a Stephen King novel of the same name, and it stars Christopher Walken as Johnny Smith. Normal guy, nothing too special, he teaches at a high school. That is until he gets into a car accident and falls into a coma for five years. When he awakes, he is plagued by these visions of death. When he touches something or someone that is any way linked to death, he immediately goes to those moments and sees them as if he were living them. Meanwhile, Martin Sheen plays the super charismatic politician, one that kind of avoids questions and obfuscates the truth, all to appeal to his more charismatic side, reminiscent of someone we might know nowadays. These two storylines intersect and collide in strange ways, and the final result is one you won't forget. The best part about this movie is probably Christopher Walken. He is as weird and kooky as ever, and he really excels in the role of Jimmy Smith. Walken's way of internalizing these visions of death seems very genuine with his strange cadence and manners of talking. When he speaks abruptly with these strange pauses pulled in and thrown everywhere, it seems almost like he's holding something back, like something was lost of Johnny Smith in that car accident. The film follows a classic three-act structure with Johnny Smith learning of his powers, trying to cope with them, and then the final resolution of what happens. The first two acts of the film are decent, but the third act is really where the film shines. That's where we get most of Martin Sheen, who is spectacular as the politician, and Walken really starts to have to grapple with the moral implications of this gift, or curse rather. We don't really know. Despite these positives, the film does fail quite frequently in my opinion. The first two acts of the film are just slow. They take a really long time to get into, and I mean, Johnny Smith is supposed to be an everyman. It's not that great to see an everyman struggling with a coma. The film seems built on that final third act, but to get to that final third act, we need all of this exposition and kind of backstory to what happens. This might have been better as a short film showing just the single implications of those last 20 to 30 minutes, rather than the full first hour that it takes to get to that final act. The ability to see the past and the future is awesome, but only if we, the audience, get to see the past and the future, which only happens two or three times. It's really rare and maybe approximates for about five to ten minutes the entire runtime. We don't get to see the dead zone that Christopher Walken sees, and we instead get to see him react. Not as much fun. Another problem that occurs within the dead zone is a lot of coincidences happen in what seems to be the smallest town in the world. Martin Sheen is running for senator of the state. You wouldn't think he'd have so many frequent run-ins with a single person, but he does. A lot. It seems like this story was really built for a full novel, and would have allowed for a lot more character, a lot more depth, and a lot more understanding in the novel format. But by squeezing it into this singular screenplay, you had to cut out a lot of the middle pieces. And in doing so, we end up with a movie that feels super constricted, and a lot less free than I'd like it to be. The highlights of the movie are just Martin Sheen scenes in general. He really steals the show, and if this could have been more of a Martin Sheen vehicle rather than a Christopher Walken vehicle, I think The Dead Zone would be remembered way past when it was first released, but now it's only a cult classic. There's this also this crazy scissor scene, which you'll know if you watch the film, that is kind of gruesome and really Cronenberg-like that I really enjoyed, but the rest of the film doesn't really work with that scene, so it kind of feels off-put, but if you're into that kind of Cronenberg body horror stuff, you'll like that scene too. If you do like this film, or it sounds interesting, but not totally your cup of tea, uh, I would suggest maybe watching other Cronenberg films. The vibe is very Cronenberg, even though a lot of the visuals aren't. So, Dead Ringers, The Fly, Scanners, a lot of those earlier Cronenberg ones feel very much horror-driven in the atmosphere, which I really enjoy. And if it's less the atmosphere and tone, and more the story you're into, some of the less 
horror-specific driven Stephen King, maybe something like Misery. Overall, The Dead Zone does a good job, and it's a fun film to watch, but Cronenberg, Walken, Sheen, and King have all done better work. It's fun to put on, especially in today's climate, and thinking about what could happen with nuclear war possibly on the verge, but only that last third really seems to stick with you, so... So if you want a fun movie with a lot of 80s horror vibes, I'd watch The Dead Zone and forget about it the next week.